I have a question. Who remembers Castle Crashers? For those of you that grew up on the Xbox 360, I'm sure that name rings a bell. Personally, Castle Crashers is a huge hit of nostalgia for me, and upon replaying it recently, I thought I'd make a video on it to not only remind people of it who used to adore this game, but also bring it to new people who may not have heard of it before. Now, for all of you Fortnite-loving fetuses out there that think Xbox One was the first Xbox, let me give you a brief description of the game. Castle Crashers is a 2D side-scroller hack-and-slash that was released to the Xbox 360 in 2008. At the beginning of the game, you can play as one of the four starter knights, which are fire, lightning, ice, or poison. As for the riveting objective of this game, you gotta beat up the bad guys. Truly a unique concept. As you progress through the game, you level up your knight, in which you get stat points. These stat points can be used to improve your different stats, whether it be strength, magic, defense, or agility. There are also lots of different swords you can choose from, that can increase or decrease certain stats, as well as animal orbs, which all have varying effects on your player. Once you beat the game, you're given a new character based on this progression chart, and then, the cycle repeats. For those of you that haven't played Castle Crashers before, I'm sure that description made the game seem a little... basic. But let me assure you, the game is much better than I described it. Now that I've given a generic description of the game, I want to go in-depth into certain details of the game, so let's begin with the gameplay. The gameplay of Castle Crashers poses a simple question. How fast can you button mash? Despite the extensive list of combos that Castle Crashers offers, as long as you can mash the Y button, for the most part, you'll probably be okay. For a large percentage of enemies, the best way to attack them is to jump and then just spam Y, if done correctly, your enemies are defenseless as you string them in the air for a long period of time. Of course, there are some exceptions to this rule. For example, the beefy enemies that can force grip you out of the air and toss you across the entire map. But besides that and a few other enemies, button mashing is your best bet. However, for those of us that don't want to develop purple tunnel in our 20s, the combos are a good alternative. The other major gameplay mechanic of Castle Crashers is the magic. As I stated earlier, every character has its own unique magic, and as you level up the magic with stat points, you get more magic moves. These magic moves can be anything. I mean, you got Fireball, Ice Shard, Poison Ball, Flaming Hammer, Gummy Bear... Wait, what? Gummy Bear? Seriously? The point is, there's lots of different magic in the game, and it makes it fun to play every single character and beat the game with them. Also, I should mention that the agility stat not only increases your speed, but also the rate at which you can fire your bow. It starts off being really slow, but by the time you have max agility, you're basically handling a semi-automatic assault rifle. Now, I want to touch on the swords and the animal orbs a bit more than I did earlier. As I said before, there are a lot of swords to choose from. And I mean a lot. As of recording this, I probably found only half of the available swords in the game. As you go through the game, the swords you can collect get better and better, whether it be from increasing more stats or having a certain effect, whether it be criticals, flame, frost, etc. Once you collect a sword with one character, you can use them for all of your characters. While that might sound overpowered, to ensure people aren't going into level 1 using the almighty dragon sword, there's a level requirement on each sword that requires the player to be at that level to use the sword. And then we have the animal orbs, which there are a lot less of compared to the swords, and I actually have all of them. Animal orbs can do a lot of different things. While some increase stats just like the weapons do, others have unique purposes. For example, shooting fireballs, letting you jump higher, or having food give you more health. Just like with the swords, once you collect an animal orb with one account, you have it for all of your characters. The differences are is that animal orbs don't have level requirements like swords do, and also you can only have one person using an animal orb at a time. Basically what this means is, when you're playing with your friends and you enter the animal orb area, it becomes a free-for-all mad dash to get Giraffe, who gives you more XP. Don't get me wrong, there are subjectively better animal orbs, but come on, who's gonna turn down free XP? Lastly for this section, I should probably talk about fighting the different enemies. For the most part, the gameplay goes as follows. You enter the level, encounter a wave of enemies, kill said wave of enemies, move forward a little bit, encounter more enemies, repeat all the way until you fight the boss, kill boss, and you win. Although that may seem incredibly boring and repetitive, each wave has a certain level of uniqueness to them which shakes things up a little bit. And as far as the boss fights go, they're very fun and creative, and every boss has its own unique charm to them. 
This gameplay loop makes the game very fun and surprisingly very replayable, at least for me. But all of that aside, can I be honest for a second? The game is pretty easy. If you can correctly employ the button mashing strat and you have a good character, you can probably beat the game in 2 or 3 hours at most. As a kid I did find the game difficult, but nowadays, it's kind of a cakewalk. To be fair, there is an insane mode, but <laughs> come on. How hard is this insane mode gonna be- Well, sh I stand corrected. Yeah, so it turns out this insane mode is actually pretty difficult. If the normal mode is algebra, then insane mode is quantum mechanics. In case you don't believe me, let's compare normal industrial castle and insane industrial castle. In normal mode, the enemies are pretty easy. They're slow, they don't deal much damage, they don't have much health. Overall, it's just a fun time and pretty easy to get through. Let's compare that to the good old insane mode. On insane mode, enemies are as fast as you, even on max agility. Plus, they do hundreds of damage per hit, and they also have a million health. Seriously, look how long it takes me to get past each wave. I, this is just unbearable. Especially this section with the elevator. I mean, before I had places to run, but now I'm confined to this limited space, so I'm basically just screwed. If I make one mistake, I'm getting killed no matter what. If I had to describe insane mode in one word, I'd probably say... Insane. Oh my god, it's Albert Einstein! It's Albert Einstein, oh my god! I'll probably make a full video on insane mode later on down the line, but for now, I'll just leave it at that. Anyways, let's move on to the next major section. Art and music. As far as the art goes, I already know what you're thinking. Oh my god, these graphics are prehistoric. Why would I be playing this internet browser flash game when I can be playing Elden Ring? You see, back in the good old days of Xbox 360, nobody cared about having the newest and greatest graphics card like the GeForce RTX 490. No, everyone's graphics were the same. In other words, trash. Thanks to this even playing field where everyone had the exact same graphics, people could focus on the things that actually mattered, like having the worst mic quality while in an Xbox Live voice chat. Seriously though, to this day, I feel like the art of Castle Crashers holds up pretty well. It's obviously not meant to be anything fancy or groundbreaking, it's just supposed to be good. And hey, I think it checks that box pretty well. The OST on the other hand, now that's a hidden gem. The music of this game is absolutely amazing. It fits the atmosphere of the game perfectly and it gets me hyped up to play. Just listen to this. You're lying to yourself if you don't think this is a certified HUD classic. The music of Castle Crashers brings me back to an era of music that's long been forgotten. I don't know exactly how to describe it, it's kind of like an arcadey dubstep twist, I don't know exactly what it is, but it has not been used in the game for a long time. All of the songs come from Newgrounds, and one of the songs in the game, Jumper, is even in the official levels of Geometry Dash, which is another favorite game of mine. I- I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Overall, the music of this game has been sadly overlooked, and I wish that more games would bring back this genre of music. The last major thing I want to talk about with Castle Crashers is the story. I know at the start of this video I poked fun at the overly simple mission of this game, but at the same time, it tells a simple yet fun story. For that, I want to do it justice and talk about the entire story, especially for those of you that aren't going to go and buy this game after the video. Oh yeah, and spoilers, I guess? I don't know why you need a spoiler warning for a decade and a half old game, but don't say I didn't warn you. <clears throat> we begin our story in the interior of our home castle, where our fellow knights are partying. Okay, doing that voice is gonna get annoying fast. Let's, uh, not do that. So yeah, everyone's partying and having a good time when, uh-oh, one of our fellow knights just came to the door and he's dead. You see, I may have failed to mention the fact that we're all in the middle of a teeny tiny major global war. The real question is, how did nobody in this room notice the sounds of D-Day going on outside of the castle? Anyways, we cut to this rather unintimidating hooded guy with a wand who steals the crystal of the king and then flies away. Now, why this crystal is so important, that's never explained. 
In fact, part of me believes that this is actually just a really large shard of crystal meth. But since this isn't Breaking Bad, it's probably unlikely. So after generic evil dude flies away, the king sends us after him. Uh, sir? He just wiped out that entire army. What do you think me, a singular knight, is gonna do against him? I mean, if you want your crystal back so badly, come and help me at least. Oh wait, I know why you aren't helping. Your magic sucks. You just heal yourself. You know what that reminds me of? Sage from Valorant. And nobody likes Sage. <laughs> so we go out, fight some barbarians, and then we notice that the princesses are being dragged away. Oh, wow. Those were some very realistic cries for help. Nonetheless, we continue to fight the enemy barbarians. Watch your step. I just mopped the floor. Uh, I think you might have to do that one again, chief. After a few more waves of enemies, we come across our first boss battle. Oh my god, it's like the Trojan horse and it was easy, okay. Okay, I know I said we were stupid for partying in the middle of the war, but come on. On! You guys are sleeping mid-battle! Pull it together! A few minutes later, we arrive at our first major boss battle. <laughs> okay, this guy seems pretty easy. I don't think he's be much of a... Okay, now that's just overkill. Okay, turns out this guy's pretty slow. Which makes sense, since he's basically the Shaquille O'Neal of barbarians. Oh no, they're taking the princesses away! Uh, you guys forgot one, by the way. And he's dead. Boom. Alright, who's coming at me next? I'm prepared, let's go! Or, you guys can just stand there. Uh, hello? You guys just gonna let this happen? Are you okay with this? Why does this barbarian look like a child? Are there children in this game? I don't want that on my conscience. Well, anyways, one out of four makeout sessions achieved. Yep, those cries for help are still not commencing. Hmm, I sure wonder who shot that arrow at me. As we walk through the forest, we keep hearing these loud stomps in the distance, and for some reason, it keeps making all the animals around us sh** themselves. Even this ginormous bear pooped himself after hearing that. Honestly, I thought he was the one doing the stomps. After defeating some more enemies, we come across some thieves running. Okay, why in the world are they running? Oh my god, I now know why they're running. This absolute freak of nature may be hard to look at, but hey, at least it's a good XP farm. After putting that thing out of its misery, we run into an abandoned mill to be met with the giant monster that was making those loud stomping noises. And cue the chase scene. So, we run for a minute or two, dodging logs and going through doorways, and after making the animation glitch out, we're now in the river. Is anybody gonna ask why there are sharks in a freshwater river? That's not normal. So we fight through some waves of bats, and also frogs, I think they're supposed to be. Then, as one charges straight for us, we're saved by a magical cannonball. Nope, never mind, it's just the king. Just as help arrives, a massive fish-cat hybrid comes out of nowhere. What is this game? At first, we do very little damage to him, and it seems like an impossible boss. However, the cannonballs multiply the damage we do to him. After many cannonballs and a lot of hitting, we finally kill the cat with the MLG Pro Gamer move known as the Boat Slam. Back on land, we find some bears, and we find out that they can use magic too. Man, no fair. I wish I could turn into a tornado. Oh no, an impenetrable wall of arrows. Whatever shall I do? After fighting through some more bears and getting a sneak peek at the bosses we'll beat later, we enter a cave. This cave is home to the objectively most annoying enemy in the entire game. Slimes. Just why? Who thought this was a fun idea? After beating the slimes, we come across this giant bat boss. The bat isn't really hard or anything, he's just annoying, especially with that toxic poop. I, I mean, it's just... Ugh. Oh, of course. I beat all those enemies in the giant bat, and that's when you guys show up. Okay. But hey, at least I get some sweet go- 
Did you just take my gold? What did you do? You weren't even here! Heh heh heh. You aren't beefy enough to break down this door. Alright man, we'll see about that. Anyways, we exit the cave into a field, and after fighting some very angry bees, we get launched into a castle. Oh my god, I'm fighting an entire wave of enemies by myself, and my backup is moving at snail's pace. Pick it up, boys! After beating all the roof enemies, we jump through a window and into the castle. Really? I was the only one that survived that? Really? After fighting through more lightsaber dudes, we come across another lightsaber dude with a tuxedo. So that's how you know he means business. But come on, I just killed tons of these dudes. How can one stand up to me? Okay then. After we damage him enough, he goes over to his piano and starts shooting cannonballs at us. Dang, he is going off on that piano. He looks like he's about to make peace with the aliens. Man. These cannonballs are getting a bit too much to handle. No worries though, I'll just stand over by the princess, cause there's no way he's gonna- Oh my god, never mind, the princess is dead. Anyways, we finally killed the lightsaber dude, and just when you think it's all over... At first, I was wondering why he was in the bathroom that long, but after taking one glance at that toilet, I know he was fighting for his life in there. So then, out of grief for his friend, the Cyclops takes the princess and runs away. <clears throat> Bro thinks he's Cardi. As we enter a forest while pushing off lightsaber dudes and thieves off our cart... Guess who's back, back. What the? Since when did you get laser eyes? He must have gotten buffed in the most recent patch. During this encounter, we make sure to kill him. That way, he won't show up a third time. I just want to take a quick moment of silence for the small percentage of players that had one health and were killed by this unavoidable damage. The next few scenes are pretty predictable. We enter the cave, fight some enemies, including those godforsaken slimes, then we enter Lava World, fight some more enemies, and then we come across the Cyclops dude. <laughs> Uh, listen, I know you're mad and all, but when in the world did you have time to set all of this up? I killed your friend like 10 minutes ago. Like, where did you get this coffin from? Did you just have a coffin lying around? Ignoring that, the Cyclops is a very predictable attack pattern, and once we hit him enough times, he trips and falls into this very convenient pit of lava. Haha. <laughs> Terminator reference. I laughed. That makes two out of the four makeout sessions completed. We now enter what appears to be hell and fight a ton of demons before coming across this door with a sandwich on it. Killing the demon that approaches us here gives us a sandwich, and once we eat the sandwich, we become beefy and we can tear down the door. Hmm, a sandwich that makes you beefy. Why does that sound familiar? <laughs> Anyways, we fight through more waves of demons before coming across the big bad himself. Oh jeez, that Dark Knight he's with seems really powerful. But either way, I'm ready to fight. Or... not. Once we kill all the skeletons, we come across a volcano that can only be killed by the beefy sandwiches. Immediately after destroying the mini-boss, we go straight into the final boss, which is a dragon and a... sock puppet. Oh my god, that demon just got owned. Are, are you okay, man? Anyways, we win the fight after beheading the dragon. Keep in mind, we only attacked his chin the entire time, so I have no clue how that works out logistically. Oh, and the sock puppet? It just goes away. Uh, never to be addressed again, I guess. But now, we have one of the three items needed to cross the sea. Meanwhile... Hey man, I'm back. Wow, of course this guy has a giant painting of himself. We come across some waves of imperialists, and once we defeat them, we find that this guy has set up some traps for us. Dude, how many traps did this guy have? Who is he, Dr. Goofenschmerz? Oh nice, a relaxing elevator ride. Here, I'll put some music in to set the mood. 
After some more fighting, we finally reach the boss. But of course, Lord Farquaad over here doesn't want to fight us himself, so instead he uses his machines. Can you not laugh every time I get hit? It, it's pretty annoying. Once we destroy all of his gadgets, he runs away like a little girl. <laughs> Karma's a bitch. And with that, we have two of the three items needed. And the last thing was at our home base. I was just too lazy to go get it. Ah, <sighs> the open ocean. So peaceful. So calm. And now we're getting raided by pirates. Oh cool, these guys have the magic ability to disappear. You know, the only other person I've ever known to be able to do that was my dad. So we fight a few waves of the ninja pirates and their ship sinks. Now we're in the desert, and immediately I'm confused. What in the world is that thing supposed to be? Also, I hate these stupid scorpions. They serve no purpose other than to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get. After fighting some more waves of generic enemies, we come across a UFO. It dies easily, and we move forward. To another UFO. Again, it dies easily. Again, we move forward. And again, we come across another UFO. Although, this one's a tad bit bigger. And now it's time for my favorite game. How long can you evade the UFO suction beam? Eventually, we're kidnapped by the UFO and brought into the ship. After solving the world's hardest escape room, we come across a couple of aliens, and an alarm starts to go off. Unfortunately, I can't read Minecraft enchantment table. However, I'm assuming that text says, All aliens report for mass genocide, because what we do next is commit mass genocide. After completing the extermination, we free this other alien prisoner. How does he thank us for his newfound freedom? by blowing up the ship. Thanks, man. With only a minute on the clock, we navigate through some aliens and some obstacles. Come on, come on, come on, come on! My controller died. After the UFO explodes, we're still in the desert, and this nice fellow brings us a camel. We thank him accordingly. Well, everyone, I think I discovered the real reason why the scorpions exist. After fighting some more desert enemies, we enter a sand castle. And yes, I do mean a sand castle. This is a castle made out of sand. I don't know how they did it, but uh, congratulations to them. Then we fight wave after wave of enemies on the rooftop before reaching the final battle. Uh, excuse me? I came here for a boss battle. Did I go to the wrong location? Okay then, volleyball match it is. With the map acquired, we find ourselves at the Flooded Temple. Unfortunately, we can't continue until we have the horn. Hey man, you doing alright? You're not looking so hot. Damn, these skeletons are just disrespectful. Like, he is dead, 100%. You, you don't have to keep doing that. See, you made the rest of the peasants mad, and now they're gonna kill you. Actually, I take that back. They're fighting you with a fishing rod. I, I don't think that's lethal. Wait, where are you guys going? What? They went right past the main bad guy and they did nothing! What are you guys doing? Well, at least the Dark Knight has finally come to fight me. Or not. Why am I not surprised? After killing the skeletons, we start encountering these green dudes and eventually... No. Another one of those? Oh hey, the peasants are back. Say, assuming there are more enemies over on the right, that means he came from where the enemies are. That doesn't add up. And look at this peasant, he's not even helping, he's just running face first into a barrel. And now that it's time to fight the boss, look at them, they're doing nothing to help me. Nah, nah, I gotta pause this real quick. You see, I have a theory. I believe that the peasants are secretly working for the bad guys. Exhibit A. These two peasants ran straight for the enemy. The enemy did nothing, and they did nothing. Exhibit B. This peasant came from the right side of the screen, and when you go to the right side of the screen, there are more enemies, which means he came from where the enemies are. Exhibit C. That same peasant is running face first into a barrel instead of fighting. And finally, Exhibit D. During this boss fight, 
these peasants do not help, they just sit and watch. In conclusion, the peasants are helping out the bad guys. Okay, back to the story. So, we have to fight this corn boss, he's not very difficult, he's just very annoying in the way he fights. After we finally defeat him, our quote-unquote friends go and get the horn for us. Okay, so in the end, you guys did help. But don't think for a second that I trust you because of this. As Hank Schrader would say, You've been seeming sus lately. It's almost like we have an imposter among us. Don't lie to me, Walt! You sussy baka! Now that we have the horn, we can open the door in the flooded temple. Here, we fight... You know, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what they're going for with this one. This is just... hideous. After fighting through some waves of them, we come across... Medusa? Dang. Medusa's kinda bad, though. Huh? Whoa, 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 hear me out, hear me out. I retract my previous statement. She's got snake slug things coming out of her hair. I... I don't like that. After hitting her enough times, she ironically turns herself into stone. We move on to the level full moon, but the only thing this level is full of is these guys. Legitimately, like that's the entire level. Rocks 1 mile, Swamp 96 miles, and Burr. Ah yes, Burr, my favorite unit of measurement for distance. Just like the previous level, Snow World is just fighting one enemy, the Eskimos. The problem is that they don't want to fight to the death, they just want to have a snowball fight. Sorry guys, but we didn't come all this way to have snowball fights, make snow angels, and drink some hot cocoa. No, we're here for blood. Eventually, we enter the castle of the Ice King. Oh my god, out of all the things to put in your castle, why would you choose to put signs that show the player how to beat the level? That's so counterintuitive. And now it's time to fight the Ice King. I gotta hand it to him, if this was a laughing competition, he'd definitely take the cake. Eventually we kill him, and he freezes himself to death. Also ironic. And just like that, three out of four makeout sessions accomplished. We finally reached it. The start of the final level. It's here that we get a stare down with the final bosses of the game. The Dark Knight, the revived Cyclops, the main bad guy, and of course, a painter. What? Where did he come from? Also, the way he's holding the princess is really concerning to me. Like, are you gonna use her as a paintbrush or something? But before we fight them, we have to fight... basically replicas of the final boss. So wait, what makes the difference between these guys and this guy? Is it the wand he has? Because if so, that kind of seems like a Captain Smek situation. There's only one super boob on this ship, and you know who it is, you looking at him. And look at this! I have the shusher. Anyways, we defeat the minions, and we head on to the final bosses. First up, the painter. I'm in your castle. Now, this may come as a shocker, but he paints things. That's about it. Oh hey look, he drew me. At some point, he stops painting things in and just starts spawning them. Uh, I'm not really sure how he does that, but okay. It must have been something I hate. No, it was probably the hundred times I hit you with my sword, but sure, yeah, give me free food. <laughs> Next up, Cyclops 2.0. Hey, buddy. No hard feelings? Okay, there are definitely some hard feelings. Oh, that's even more horrifying. I, I'm so sorry. Eventually, we defeat them, and they become angels. They can finally rest in peace. The third boss is the Black Knight. Finally, after all these times he's evaded me, he can fight. Oh, come on! After we defeat two waves of him responding in enemies, he finally comes down to fight us. The Black Knight is the only enemy in the entire game to use their shield, so the gameplay feels a lot more interesting. Also, his magic is just sick. And once defeated, he doesn't drop a chest like the other two. He just drops a sword. A really good sword, in fact. And now, it's finally time. The final boss.
Whoa, some crystals. Okay, that was easy. Whoa, he has the same exact magic as his minions, further confirming my theory that the only thing that differentiates him and his minions is the wand that he has. Okay, once again, that was easy. Whoa, he turned into a Discord mod. Once again, very easy. Whoa, that was it? Really? <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I spent so long on the other levels and the other bosses, but this, this is rather short. I... I can't believe that. Wow, uh, okay. Well, I guess it's time to open my chest and see what I- Oh, what the- Oh my god, this guy's like Mike Tyson with those left and right hooks. Yes, let's go, he's finally dead. Oh my god, and he's back to a Discord mod. Okay, surely after that many transformations, you don't have any more tricks up your sleeve. He did indeed have one more trick up his sleeve. And there! Finally, grab that dragon sword and we are done. Whew. I know the game wants me to land on the crystal or whatever, but what if I don't? Okay, this is boring. But of course, it's not as boring as the nearly three minute unskippable credit scene that follows this. Seriously, why did you guys not add a skip button? Oh cool, we're back where it all started. Wait a minute. Is that a bandit? Are these enemies? Why are they in our territory? Uh, guys, these people were literally just trying to kill us. Why are we all hanging out with them now? And look at this guy. He's still trying to kill him. Why are we all smiling about it? Wh wh what's happening? You know what? I don't even care anymore. Let me just get the fourth and final makeout session and this can all be a- What is this? The devs really said, let's put a random acid trip in at the end. That should be funny. Well, anyways, that's the end. Hey, look, a new character. All right, time for my concluding statements. Are you guys still here? I if you're still watching, thank you. You're a real one. But anyway, in conclusion, Castle Crashers is just a great game. I mean, its charm holds up even 15 years later, and I still recommend it. If you haven't played it before, I recommend you buy it now. It's only like $16 on Steam, so if you have the money, I'd recommend you play it. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. Sorry this took so long for me to get out. Uh, if you can tell, it took a long time because, well, it's over half an hour long. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my Switch of content. If this is your first time watching, you're probably confused because, you know, it's like your first time watching. But I usually post uh, content on a game called Brahalla. And I've recently started to, you know, step away from that. Still gonna do it, don't worry. I'm still gonna play Brahalla. Still gonna do Brahalla content for those that, are, you know, are wanting that. But yes, I am gonna be playing uh, other games. Uh, I, so I do have some Castle Crasher video ideas and some other games as well that I'll be doing. So can't wait to see uh, how that goes. But. Yeah. Anyways, I'm out of here.